Okay, uh, hats off to Georgia. Uh, came in and, and dominated the game, and, and really all three phases, you know, more physical than us at the, at the line of scrimmage. Um, and it showed uh, too many lost yardage plays offensively uh, to get us behind the chains and, you know, didn't have enough explosive plays uh, offensively. Defensively, obviously, number one thing is, you know, we couldn't stop the run. Uh, inability to get off the field on third down, uh, just, a, just a long night. Okay, and uh, hats off to them. Uh, we got one more week against Kentucky and uh, just challenge the guys that you know, another opportunity to go fight. And we're going to find out who wants to fight. Uh, if you want to fight, they'll be on the plane going to Lexington. Questions? Go to Ben Briner with the first one. Hey, Mike. Uh, on the topic of fight, just how much fight did you see from both Luke and Kevin in the way that they kind of approached and played today? Well, it was good to see uh, Luke Doty. It was, I mean, I'm looking at his, his numbers and, you know, completed a high percentage. Obviously, the two turnovers uh, are not good, uh, but sometimes you're going to make mistakes as a young player. But his, his competition and the way he competes and the way he fights uh, is, is something that, that can be built around. Uh, just finished talking in there, and Luke's the one that grabbed them together and broke it down, uh, which was good to see, uh, taking ownership you know, of, of, of his play in this team. And then that's what this, that's what this team needs is, is leadership. And, and for a freshman to step up and be vocal, uh, was good to see Kevin Harris, you know, it was tough 53 yards that he gained. I know he caught some, what, four catches for 30 yards. You know, I wish we could have gave him a little bit more space, but that's, that's a, that's a tough defense. It's tough to run against. Uh, but I, I thought, you know, it wasn't his best game statistically, but I thought it was his best game as far as breaking, breaking yards, I mean, having yards after contact, really good game by him. David Conninger. Hey, Mike, uh, how was Ernest Jones? I saw he didn't play the second half there. Yeah, he got, I think he got banged up on maybe the second drive of the game. Uh, tried to go over the rest of the first half, was in and out, and they ruled him out and told me he was out. Uh, so I'm not sure how serious the injury is. Colin Taylor. Yeah, Mike, just kind of sticking with that a little bit, just how hard is it to execute a defensive game plan when you have so many guys out, then obviously you lose Ernest uh, the, well, sec the second game. Well, well I, obviously it's, it's tough. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are that are out. Uh, they were We knew out coming into this game. We lost J.J. on Friday, going into Friday's practice. Uh, Jalen Dickerson was brought, uh, banged up, but like I just told those those kids in there, you know, part of being a man is is you don't you don't make excuses and you don't let people make excuses for you, uh, and you know that's that's part of it. It doesn't define who you are uh, as an individual. Uh, it doesn't define who you are as an offensive defense. It doesn't define who you are as as a gamecock going forward next week and, and beyond next week is how you respond to that. And don't, you know, and don't let somebody make an excuse for it. It's easy to sit here and say, we didn't have this. We didn't have that. I mean, that's it. That's evident. Uh, but we had, we, we went out there and we played ball. Uh, and if you're on the field, you're wearing a Gamecock uniform, you need to fight your ass off. Josh Kendall. They got mine. Thank you. Dick Cox. Mike, can you talk about the character of your team? You're down 45-10. You got the ball on your own two of just fighting and putting together a 98-yard uh, drive there in the fourth quarter. Well, I, I, I've been proud, uh, you know, of these guys uh, really, you know, the last couple of weeks of, you know, when things haven't gone well, uh, there's been a there's been a continuation of, of effort and fight and strain and and offensively really that that they've been led by Sedarius Hutchinson up there and then you know you got it on the one I said let's just go 99 or on the two let's go 98 uh the guys played for 60 minutes they didn't look at the scoreboard and obviously it wasn't in our favor and just to you know to do that at the end of the game with some young players in there with Luke Doty with Rashad Amos busted the run uh, you know, and I can't say enough about Nick Muse, the way he played. Nick Muse is made of the right stuff. Uh, he really is. He, he's what you want as a Gamecock because he cares. It's, it's important to him. It's important to him, and it, and it, and it shows in, in his play. Mike Yuva. Mike, what was it like earlier this week in terms of just some of the seniors? Obviously, it's a unique situation for you um, being, the, being the interim head coach on, on senior night. But what was that moment like for those guys? And, you know, did you have any message for the team in terms of just looking at, at them in terms of how they've handled things over the last couple of weeks and years? 
Well, just I think it starts with, uh, you know, all, all those guys. And sometimes, you know, you want to look at your legacy as, you know, as how many wins or what you left the program. You know, but the legacy of these seniors is showing these young guys not, how you don't quit. You know, when, when you're not dealt the hand that you want, you continue to fight. And proud of those guys, especially number 50 on the offensive line. I think that showed a lot when he ran on the field and all those linemen ran out there just to take a picture with him. Uh, and, you know, he's played really well this year. And, you know, and it's been, a, it's been about the team. It hadn't been about him. And I think that's what the, the seniors are going to leave these guys is that, hey, we're going to continue to fight and play our butts off uh, no matter the circumstances. John Whittle. It seemed like the O-line really struggled tonight. Is that is that a fair statement? And, and if so, what would you attribute that to? Uh, to Georgia for number one. Uh, I think really they've, they've, they've shut really everybody down except for two teams, which is Alabama and Florida. And they, and they threw for close to 400 yards in the passing game. They got a really stout run defense. Uh, we had too much penetration uh, on our back blocks, you know, too much penetration inside. And we couldn't get on the edge a couple times. Uh, so, I mean, they've got a good front. They're athletic. They've got size. I know they had some guys down too, but, uh, you know, they could run. And when we did get on the corner, uh, their speed from their linebackers showed on some of our outside plays. You know, more success was running, you know, inside when we were able to crease them. But talented, talented front with speed. Ben Briner. Uh, hey, Mike. Um, I, I saw kind of right at the end, of, right after the – game ended you grabbed Luke and kind of gave him a few words I guess C could you share maybe kind of kind of what you said to him and what, what kind of your message was to him after today well I said uh proud of the way you fought uh, you don't you don't lack confidence and that's part of you know being a great player is you believe in yourself and you believe in other guys around you you, you made some mistakes but you're going to learn from those things and you're going to be a damn good player because you're not scared it's about I think that was the gist of it probably not word for word but that was close Sorry, Ben, one more. Um, it, I know you guys had published a list of people who were, were going to walk uh, at some point early in the week, and then there were a few more guys on, on that list. Did, did they come to you and ask, or did they just not make the first list? What was sort of the process there? Uh, or, they were more than I thought when I went over it uh, the, the other day with uh, George Wynn, our director of football operations. I think they went to him and wanted to walk. Uh, I asked the company, I'm not going to I asked a couple when they came out, thought you weren't walking. And they said, well, they, they, they're probably coming back, but they just did it to, in case. You know, I can't speak for every one of them, but that was a couple of them's response. Eric Boynton. Yeah, Coach, when uh, you've already got a number of players out or down, and all of a sudden right before the game, you have a number of other key players scratched, what do you kind of say to your team to really kind of keep their heads in the game, not let them – go to you know get too down when they know they're going to have to move forward without a lot of very good teammates well it's 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 you know you kind of you kind of relate it to things aren't going to go the way you want you know for the rest of your life you know you think things that, we always see that there's this you know this perfect perfect life when you look on social media these perfect programs where everything we think happens you know the way you know where everything's great but it's not Everybody's got issues. Everybody's dealing with problems. It's how you respond to those things and how you how you stand up. And part of being a man is 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 standing up and going to work, uh, and providing you know for your family and doing the right things. And that's that's been my message. That's been our coaches' messages. I think our coaches have done a great job of not flinching, uh, of coaching who's out there. We had a number of guys that hadn't taken a snap uh, tonight that played. Uh, they coached their tails off. They got ready to play, and those kids are going to be better better for it. Uh, because when they went through this, when they had to play, uh, and I think they responded the right way. And, you know, I think you learn more when you get your butt kicked uh, than you do sometimes in success, you know, and, and we're still playing a game of football. Uh, you know, our, our, our Reverend Jackson in the, in the devotion the other day, you know, talked about sometimes, you know, we'll be – happiness is, is based off what happens, you know, but we got to look at the pure joy of, of being alive and being able to play the game. Uh, you know, it's not just our circumstances, it's what we get to do. So that's kind of been our, been our message. Uh, it's not the way we envision it and it's never going to be the way you envision it. You know, every player that's ever went to school, it doesn't happen the way they thought it was going to happen when they got recruited. You know, you're hit with adversity. How are you going to respond? Phil Cornblut. 
say, hey, Mike, I, I know in a game like this, there aren't a lot of individual plays that maybe will stick with you, but that one run by Kevin Harris where he went the extra effort to get that first down, is that like a cutout play that uh, that you show teams over and over again when you talk about never quitting and, and playing with a lot of heart? That was a that was an individual effort, and you know we play as a team. But individually, you have you there, there's times you're going to have to make individual efforts uh, to sustain drives, to make plays that are explosive plays. And that was another example of that. I thought he ran extremely hard tonight. It's fourth and one. We're on our side of the field. We basically get stuffed at the point of attack, and the coaches on their headphones are like, "Oh!" But Kevin didn't. He didn't give up. He continued to fight and, and, and got a first down. And that, I, I, was, I was proud of those guys all night offensively, the way they fought, um, even defensively. You know, we get, you know, turnovers and then a punt return. And, you know, they bowed their neck enough to hold them to a field goal. I know the penalty helped, but just fight. And Kevin's a great example of that. You know, uh, you know we've got great individual effort uh, at times of playing hard, uh, you know, and, and examples that you'll be able to show the team. You know, this team, this team, in my opinion, has got to take more ownership of that. Guys got to demand it from more guys, you know, within the team. And, you know, and you hear coaches say this all the time. You can't be coach led. You got to be player led. And that's true for this, for this, you know, to get over the hump, you know, players have got to take ownership and take leadership. And Kevin was a, Kevin's not a vocal guy, but that, that demonstrated that. And then, like I said, you know, after the game, Luke Doty brings him up and, and breaks him down and, and, and talks about what he wants going forward in the next week. Those are good signs. Last question goes to John Whittle. Uh, Deshaun Fenwick was out and, and, and Kira Thomas. Can you share the status of those guys going forward? Uh, Deshaun, unless, you know, right now he's, he's, he's tested positive for, for COVID, had a test on Thursday, came back negative, came in Friday, didn't feel well. We tested him. I'm not sure which test, uh, we, if it was the, you know, the one that you get results quicker, I, I'm not sure. I have to ask our trainer. I'll have a better answer probably when I meet with you guys on Tuesday, Kiara Thomas, uh, I'm not sure. It's probably wait and see. I think he got a little healthier as the week gone, went on, but he was not 100%. You know, so it'll be wait and see uh, as this week comes. But if, if he comes back, the child comes, I, th I don't know the protocol and how many negatives he's got to have or if they tested him today. I just know he's out. And, you know, more than likely he'll be out. Him and JJ will be out the rest of the season. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Is that it? Okay.